Welcome to this week's video. This week's video is more of a, a vlog style. I've got a YouTuber coming up who's um, uh, probably the words are a bit of a Tesla fanboy, I think would be fair. And the only hint I'm going to give you on who he is before you see him are these. Are you listening? Damn. Hi James! Hello! <laughs> Not wearing the glasses today. <laughs> that, that joke didn't really work then, did it, with these? So, shall I, shall I get them out? <laughs> Yeah, yeah it can't, it's not a James Cook video if you've not got some sunglasses on. Now, I actually know the real reason why you wear sunglasses. It's the same reason why I should start wearing sunglasses. And so, everyone thinks you're looking at the camera, but what you're actually doing is you're looking at your screen, which is not on the camera. Is that why you wear them, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So, like, just then, even, when you were talking, I was I was looking down here to see what was going to be in shot, rather than looking up at the lens. Yeah, and it's... It's, it, it works so well because a lot of people com complain at YouTubers, oh, you're not looking at the camera. It's because they are looking at the camera, they're just looking at the shot, not where the camera is. It's, it's because they don't have a cameraman, you know? Yeah. If I had a dedicated cameraman, then yes, I would just focus on the on the lens and everything else would be taken care of. Sorry, see, this is me doing a rubbish <laughs> job as cameraman. <laughs> there we go. See how this, I, I prefer cameras that, that don't do oh, the... Oh, I like the you gimbal. Know. You've got to love the gimbal. Well, I like the gimbal, but... I find for this sort of thing specifically, it, if it wanders out, then it's a real pain to get it back in. Whereas if you're holding it, you just move it. If you see what I mean. Anyway, sorry. Yes, we was we were saying. Yeah, so I'm saying that you are a bit of a Tesla fanboy, a little bit. I think I think that is fair to say. Yes, yeah. I. So I do I do like my uh, my Tesla quite a lot. Yeah. Now to be fair. You are the reason I bought EV, uh, bought an EV. You are the reason that got me into an EV. I saw your original Renault Zoe video. Really? Yeah. And oh. I went, I'm going to buy a Zoe. Um, and Three I of them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, now now I sell a lot of them. But you got yeah. me into EVs. And I, at the time, could not afford a Tesla. There's no way I could afford a Tesla. Me and my wife could not afford a Tesla. So you test drove a Zoe. And I went, oh, there's an EV I can afford. There's an affordable car. And you weren't very nice about the Zoe. Really? You, you you complained that it didn't have fast charge. Now this is this is a forty kilowatt hour battery, mm. and it's only got twenty two kilowatts charging. I'm very careful that I got my kilowatts and kilowatt hours right there because everyone likes to have a go at me in the YouTube comments. I'll take you on a little drive in this car and show you why I love it so much. Now, if you don't know who James is, James has a YouTube channel which is a vlog style, which is probably one of the best vlogs on electric car if you just want to see james's life and evs and how he's lived it he has one of the best vlogs styles i've seen for a long long time out of most youtubers it doesn't bore me and i watch every single video so i am actually a little bit of a james fanboy oh that's so nice of you to say now he's just been out in my tesla model 3 and if you want to see that video that's on james's channel and there's a link to that at the end of the video and a link in the description now it's not as quick as a model 3 but Look at that, I mean, it's not bad. It isn't bad. It... So when was the last time you drove the Zoe then, James? Um, whatever the date is on that video that I had before. <laughs> You've never driven it since? Um, definitely when I was driving it, it was in the video. So whatever the most recent <laughs> Renault Zoe video is, that's it. But I. I liked it very much because I really felt that out of all the EVs I'd driven apart from Tesla at that point, the Zoe was the one that was actually a realistic proposition. Even without it being that much of a fast charging car, you know, it could quite happily do 80 miles, 90 miles, and, you know, in the winter, in the rain, at motorway speeds, and you would still end up with a decent amount of range left over to go somewhere else. So in other words, it worked. It was, it was a car. Whereas some of the EVs I'd driven were, they were really pushing the definition of car. I'm talking like the original Leaf, for example, and then the 30 kilowatt hour Leaf as well. That wasn't really a huge amount better. It was just, they just didn't, you couldn't use it. You put the climate control on and it's like, you know, barely gets you to the shops. Now you see, that's one thing that the Zoe has got right, which is it's got a heat pump. Ah, yes. Right, which is one thing that Tesla haven't done yet apart from the Model Y, and there's a rumor that the Model 3 is getting it. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, eventually when it becomes cheap enough, I'm sure they'll put it on all their vehicles. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense because it saves so much range. It does, but then Tesla always fixed that problem by just putting a bigger battery in, <laughs> didn't they? I mean, he, originally he was talking about putting a supercapacitor. They looked at that, you know, let's put a supercapacitor in, including a battery, so that we can have extra oomph off the line. And then somebody said, why don't you just put a bigger battery in? It's like, oh yeah, that would be simpler and give more range and more performance. Piece of cake. Uh, yeah, so you got ready on the dash. You are Ooh. ready to drive. This, 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 this it's got, a, it's got it? a handbrake, James. It's got wow. a handbrake. And do I have to get out the front to sort of crank the engine to get it going? No, no, but I'll tell you what's really cool about having a handbrake. Yes. You can do handbrake turns. Fine, okay. But <laughs> as I'm not 16 and I actually have a driving <laughs> licence that I like. Uh, okay, where's go? Uh, so you have to pull the shifter into... How, how many years have you had a Tesla for? That's it. Pull it into drive. Oh, yes, no, I see. It's moving. <laughs> On the screen, it's moving. That's so cool. <laughs> do we creep? We do creep. Yes, it does creep. I like Zoe. creep. I do. You do like creep. I do. I'm a so, big I put, always, put, always put it on on my Tesla. I just it, I find it for car parks. You know, just sort of, there we go. It's just really easy to be fine adjustments. Whereas with that Model 3, for example. You can turn creep on. Sure. But with that off... I'd be relying on the car, especially as somebody who just got into it, I'd be relying on the car not to let me go smack into a bollard because that's what I would be doing by accident. I mean, you saw what it was like when I first got in the thing. Yeah. It was very kind of, oh, oh, because I wasn't used to how... So the way the Zoe's been designed, the Zoe's actually been designed for someone who's never driven an EV before. So it's supposed to feel extremely intuitive if you've never had an EV. It's just a nice car. It's a nice car to drive. I'm, I'm a big fan. So yeah, the, I really am. A nice high driving position, great visibility around me, nice and snappy off the line. Brakes, they're normal, you know, but they're fine. Yeah, so, so your brakes on this are a bit like your, your Audi. They increase the regen. There is some regen with no pedal. Yeah, I thought it was regen -y then, actually. Yeah, so there, so there is some regen with no pedal, um, but basic, basically your regen increases with the more you press the pedal. James, about five minutes ago, said he was gonna show me how easy it is to edit his 360 degree footage, and is still editing his 360 degree footage 10 minutes later. In fairness, in fairness, that five minutes was just copying the data from the card to the laptop. The actual editing started about yep. 10 seconds ago. Okay. A few moments later. Right, so we've done half of the first video which does sound like it takes quite a long time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it does. It, it, I'm not going to lie. It, as an, as an exercise for the computer to do, stitching those two shots together is quite processor intensive. Yeah, so apart from this video being about how, you know, how the Zoe works and how you're missing out on the joy of, of, of why slow charging on a, a city EV is completely fine, because, you know, it depends how you define slow charging. I mean, there is a world of difference between three kilowatts and 22. You know, 22 is pretty quick. You know, you could road trip with that. You just have to make sure that you stop somewhere like a pub, not a motorway service station. Uh, I mean, I've done it. When I went up to um, Scotland the first time in my Tesla, there were a handful of Chadamos, but for the most part, it was 22 uh, kilowatts charge your car posts that I used and it was fine because we would just pl plug up in some random town in Scotland and head to the local pub for a lunch and by the time we got back to the car it would be pretty much you know 90%. I think the, mo the, most, the most thing that people don't realise when uh, they get an EV is they can actually go anywhere in it it's just how much of your life you want to sacrifice sitting at a charger. And you see, I don't want to sacrifice any of my life. I wasn't going to charge on the way over here. Yeah. But then I thought to myself, well, actually, I want to stop for the loo and a coffee. And if I don't stop and eat some lunch, then I'll be starving hungry and I'll get here going, right, we need lunch. So I figured, well, if I'm stopping, then I can do my charging now, which yeah. means that when I leave, I'll just go straight home. You see, my, my argument is your car doesn't need so your range and your charger only needs to be as big as your bladder. Yep. So I have roughly a 110 mile bladder. That's, that's, that's the limit of my, after 110 miles, I need a pee. And to be honest, sometimes after 80 miles, I am bursting for a pee. In the UK, 
a hundred miles is two and a half hours of driving, roughly. Yeah. You know, because of traffic conditions. So, and if you live in LA, where it's just gridlock, an hour of traffic could be 20 miles. So small EVs can fit a lot of small commutes. Yeah. Everyone thinks that making a YouTube video is just turning on a, well, that's what I do, turning on a camera. I mean, even like, I'm mic'd up. James, James just talked quite loud, so the mic should pick him up over there. But to sync this audio is a, is a two minute job, but it's a two minute job that I have to do. And cutting, knowing when to cut, like me and James have been talking, what, going to this four minutes, but probably you're only gonna see 40 seconds, 50 seconds of this footage. Yeah. It's so much editing and like me and James were talking about what do you leave in and what do you cut out and it's just the workflow and, and, and to get things done is so hard. Yeah. Harder because there's no one to go, oh you just said kilowatts then, not kilowatt hours when you said the battery. Oh my word, the number of times that I've just replaced one word with another, like literally the last video, the video about the Audi, when I was saying that you know I have the oldest Tesla they've ever made. No, I have the slowest Tesla they ever made, literally. But not oldest, so you just have to kind of, and what can you do? It, it, it's, people need to appreciate that when we're filming on our own, we make word slips that can't be undone and we can't refilm that scene because we won't be editing it for four days or two days. Yeah. You know, it, it's such a hard process. If you divided the hours that we spend filming yeah. stuff and the hours of editing, I'm working for 10p an hour. Really, that much? Yeah, I, I'm on a lot of money. <laughs> Dude. It's it's good. It's really well paid this YouTube and Larky. And talking about that, um, I'm going to end the video here. So if you want to become one of my Patreons, check out my Patreon page. If you want to check out James's videos, there's a link above his head for his YouTube channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.